We're going to jump into uh, what we talked about yesterday, and um, I'm going to wait for a few more people to jump on before we really get going here. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we will get started. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word is alive and active. It goes into our lives. It accomplishes everything that is needed. So we declare today that as your word comes into our lives, it produces within us. It examines within us. Um, it encourages within us. We thank you, Father God, that we are becoming more and more Christ-like. Uh, we understand that our spirit man does not become more Christ-like, but our soul man, our mind, our way of thinking our way of doing becomes more Christ-like as we study your word and as we go into, um, into doing what Jesus did and saying what Jesus said. Thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I posted on my Facebook page uh, that I today I was going to apologize for some things that I said. And so here it goes. I am sorry for how I said what I said towards the end of yesterday's broadcast, uh, 10 at 10. I, do, I, however, do not apologize for what I said. So sometimes we can say the right thing but have the wrong tone and it come across wrong. Um, that was definitely the case yesterday. Um, I am passioned and impassioned to grow the body of Christ, to grow our body, light the bay, um, to be disciples of Christ. And I see that one of the biggest hangups in the body of Christ right now is fear. Um, fear is a tool of the devil. It is not a tool of God. Uh, but I can see within Christians, I can see within churches, I can see with posts on social media, uh, you can definitely see it in the news where fear is rampant and the devil is using that tool um, to drive uh, other issues, uh, division, other things. So um, what I said yesterday about fear and worry being a tool of the devil to deplete you uh, is exactly the truth. It is the word of God. So the more you keep it like a blanket wrapped around you or wrapped around your head, it's almost like a beanie or a, a ball cap that you keep on. And what it does is it will cause you to not get the full exposure to the son, Jesus, that you're supposed to have. So um, you need to hate fear. You need to hate worry because both of those um, lead to death. So with that said, let's jump into, and we're going to redo what we talked about yesterday, which is 2020 is the year of abundant harvests. Now I used some qualifiers here uh, yesterday. If you are in Light the Bay, if you are, are associated with Light the Bay or you call us, um, Pastor Peggy and I, spiritual leaders in your life, we impart into your life. Um, not you just come on every so often and um, it, you understand. The word that God gave to me at the end, probably around October, November-ish, of 2019 is that 2020 would be a year of abundant harvests. The year of abundant harvests, not harvest, harvests. And I use the scripture, God gave me the, the, the scripture, um, Psalm 65, 11 on Sunday when we were opening up service. It says, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. So 65, that's Psalm 65, 11 in the NL, NLT. Now, we see something happening in society. 
but yet we've gotten a word from God that was outside of what we see going on in society. So we see division, racism, but predominantly we are seeing the whole COVID-19 issues. And because of the shelter in place, really a lot of people have backed up in place. And they're taking a hunker down mentality in life. They're taking a, when this is over, we can live once again. But I want to challenge you and I want to encourage you with um, who told you to hunker down? Um, whose voice are you listening to when you get into the mindset that because there's things going on, because we're hearing things in the news of financial issues, that it actually has to apply to us? Who told you that... Um, you should really, um, you shouldn't celebrate uh, the things of God, the goodness of God, the, the grace of God, the abundance of God, the healing of God, the salvation of God. Who told you you shouldn't be celebrating those things right now? Yes, I understand that there is hurt that is going on in the world. But I, my faith in what God has spoken remains the same. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word never changes. His word is yes and amen. It is the same whether we're going through a pandemic or whether, we, or whether everyone in the world is starting to receive healing in their bodies. God is just as much God. His word is just as much his word. His abundance is just as much abundance when things are going down and things are going up. When we're in the valley and when we're in the mountaintop. And we understand that there are gonna be all of those seasons in life. There's spring, summer, fall, winter. There are all of those things in life. But the word of God is still true. The word of God still says that when we do what God has called us to do, that if we do not faint in due season, we will reap a harvest. So yeah, I agree with Rose who just put on there, we live by faith, not by sight. I'll even add one more to that, Rose. We live by faith, not by feelings. We live by faith and not by what so-and-so is saying. And I see it in the body of Christ. There is, there is a major push by the devil right now to cause division within the church. And there is, um, the word of God says that in the last days there will be a falling away. I understand that. I see that happening in churches right now. But if you call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, if you, follow, if you call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ, if you call yourself a Christian, then that, that means Christ-like, then our responsibility to Jesus, our responsibility to our Lord is to say, Yes, in Christ Jesus, there is a different way to live, and I choose to live that way no matter what. Okay? So when we look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, I am astonished, in the NIV, it says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. When we go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 through 9, it says, You were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? Uh, was it COVID? Was it racism? Was it financial stuff? Was it physical stuff? Okay. All of these are legitimate questions to ask. We're not beating anyone down. 
we are encouraging you to once again to, to, to take up, to stand up, to do what God has called us to do, and that is to run the race that he has set before us, okay? Uh, verse eight, Galatians 5, 8 says that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you, talking about Jesus. Verse nine, a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. When you start believing the little, a little lie in one area, what it does is it opens the door to other areas. So, you know, there's a, there's a famous proverb over in the Middle East that if, if you let the camel stick his head in the tent, soon his whole body will be in the tent. In other words, the devil is not satisfied with taking just a little bit. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if you are seeing destruction in your life, that is a place where you need to take the word of God. You need to apply the word of God. You need to put pressure on that issue with the word of God. And the word of God tells us in James, submit to the Lord. Another, not just submit like, okay, I'm submitted to you, God. But submit to his ways. Submit to his word. Submit to his way of doing things. And as we do that, then what will happen is the devil sees that. It says, submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee in terror. So as we submit to the Lord, submit to his ways, we resist the devil with the word. It's the shield of of faith. It's the sword of the spirit. When we take those weapons on and we say, no, I'm not going to take that thought that is coming towards me. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I take on the mindset of Christ. Then what we see is we see an advancement with the kingdom of God. So coming back to uh, Psalm 65, 11, it says, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. Now at Light the Bay, around the offering times, we always say, we call every bill paid in full, on time, with more than enough left over. And then 11 years ago, 12 years ago, when I became the senior pastor of the church, God told me to start speaking this over our campus and over our um, congregation, to start saying it, that we call every bill paid off. We are a debt-free church. We are debt-free. So I am calling Light the Bay, the mortgage paid off in the name of Jesus. I command it to be paid off in the name of Jesus. A supernatural harvest, a supernatural way of the, of the way of how God can pay off that. And I'm calling our Bakersfield home. We still own a home in Bakersfield that we rent out. I'm calling it paid off in the name of Jesus. There is a stir, whoo, there's a stirring up that is happening on the inside to, to, to rise up in power, to rise up in light, to be the salt, to not be assaulted, but to be the salt, to be the light, to not be shown, uh, to be hidden by all of the cancel culture, by all of the junk. Do we do things in love? Absolutely. If you don't do it in love, then it really counts for nothing. But I am calling all of the Light the Bay people, all those who are connected, even, you know, I see Pastor Ben on, on, um, on our tenant 10 right now. So I speak that over your church. I see Pastor Andrew Miley uh, with us today. I speak that over your ministry, that every bill is paid in full, on time, 
with more than enough left over because we walk in the abundance of God because no matter what is going on in society, he crowns our year with bountiful harvest, even the hard pathways. You may say, this is a hard pathway right now. What we're doing with the whole shelter in place and closing the doors and opening the doors and all that nonsense, um, th that's a hard pathway. But it still says in the word of God, it will overflow with abundance. So I'm, I'm speaking to you, body of Christ, right now. Uh, Pastor Ben, others, Pastor Andrew Miley, share it on all your, all your um, different groups that you can share with. Let's get this word out. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up in power. We rise up in power by taking on the word of God and pushing back the thoughts that would try to invade to calm us down. I love you. Have a great day. You are successful in Christ Jesus. You are his chosen people. Let's rise up to the occasion and let's walk it out before all of those who need to hear the good news. Jesus saves. He redeems us from sickness and he redeems us from poverty. He loves us. He is not against us. He is for us. He is not against us. Have a great day.